welcome to this week's Battle of the Ports and the game that was the first of two products from the fledging Lucas Games. Rescue on Fractalus was first released for the Atari 8-bit line of home computers in 1985. The game is a space combat simulator in which the player flies a space fighter near the surface of a planet, with the goal of rescuing downed pilots. The terrain is generated via fractals, from which the planet and the game title are taken. Originally the game was meant to be based upon the Star Wars franchise, however, George Lucas was not keen on the idea and soon put a stop to that. During development, Rescue of Fractalus was named Behind the Jaggy Lines. The name refers to both the Jaggies and the fractal race of hostile aliens in the game, as well as the lack of spatial anti-analyzing in the game's graphics, resulting in jagged diagonal lines. In the game you control a Valkyrie space fighter in a first person view while attempting to land and pick up downed Earth Corps pilots. It's not as easy as you might think though, as some of the mountains hold anti-aircraft guns, which have to be avoided or destroyed. Due to the varied terrain, the direction finder has to be used to locate the pilots, whose visual beacons are often masked by mountain ridges. Of course by today's standards this is a pretty lame looking game, but back in 1985 this would have been very cool. I would have been 10 at the time and definitely would have played this if I had a computer it would run on. Sadly in 1985 I'm pretty sure I had the Commodore Plus 4. The Atari 5200 version was next and it goes without saying that it is pretty much identical to the Atari 8-bit line of home computers, as often was the case. I have no idea how to bloody land in this version though, as the 5200 doesn't use a keyboard. Amstrad CPC port next, which was apparently ported by Activision. This is noticeably more sluggish than the Atari version, and also missing the cool opening with the Starship. This port is also much weaker in audio, not that the original was great, but this seems to be more lacklustre. 
it also suffers from more popping and for some reason there's a lack of enemy turrets on certain stages when there should be some. Next up is the Apple II port also by Activision. In fact they were behind many of the home computer ports. This one actually has a title screen, very nice. The plus points continue with this port moving at a much nicer speed than the Amstrad version but I sure wouldn't say it was smooth. On the negative side the lack of a spaceship engine noise makes things a little dull and the radar indicator is very small making it easy to overlook any pilots that need picking up. Soft Talent were behind the Commodore 64 port and they've done a far better job than Activision did. This version resembles the Atari 8-bit line of home computers very well. It's practically the same apart from missing the big starship at the beginning but in its replacement we get a title screen. This is a great port that easily overshadows the Amstrad and Apple II versions. ZX Spectrum time and boy this is a sack of shit. It's barely functional. While attempting to play this one I found myself not even knowing what I was looking at. The enemy seems to be invisible, I can't tell if there are any turrets about and I can't even pick up any pilots because I can't see their ships and the radar seems to be broken because I'm constantly told I'm out of range or something despite being on the spot where the pilot should be. Avoid this crap at all costs. In 2004 a prototype of the unfinished Atari 7800 version was found by the original developer. Sadly this version has a significant amount of gameplay elements not implemented but still it's cool to add to this video. As you can see the game certainly makes use of the extra power the 7800 had to offer. It's just a shame there's a big orange bar across the screen obstructing the view. And let's take a look at all those versions of Rescue on Fractalus running side by side. 